So if you're like most Americans, especially if you're from the Bay Area, you're probably very good at recycling. Each year, Americans make around 250 million tons of trash, but we're able to recycle about 25% of that. That's 60 million tons of paper, cardboard, plastic, gla and glass that never go into the landfill. Instead, these resources are recycled for, um, for their efficient use, and it's a beneficial thing for the environment. Unfortunately, there are other waste streams that we've completely ignored. We produce about 20 times more carbon dioxide each year than we do trash. And we currently are just throwing that away into the atmosphere. So we just heard about how we can start to capture that carbon dioxide. What my colleagues and I are working on is a way to recycle it back into chemicals and fuels. So there's a reason that many people feel that fossil fuels rock. <laughs> they're very abundant, they're energy dense, and they're very stable. And we've used fossil fuels over the last 150 years. We've developed many processes to turn these materials into the chemicals and more refined fuels that we current re currently rely on. Unfortunately, when we extract the energy from these fossil fuels, we end up emitting carbon dioxide, which is accumulating in the atmosphere and causing environmental damage due to the rapid changes in climate that it causes. What we're working on is a way to recycle that carbon dioxide back into the exact same chemicals and fuels that we currently use, using renewable electricity as an energy source. <clears throat> so if we can do this and start to use recycled carbon dioxide as a source of these chemicals and fuels, then we'll reduce or even eliminate our need to, to extract more fossil fuels, which reduces our overall new CO2 emissions. Um, one of the things that we as a group would like to do is start to challenge the way that we think of carbon dioxide as an unwanted waste product and instead start to think of it as the most basic building block that we can use to make the compounds that we rely on every day. One of our technical challenges is to reduce the amount of energy that we need for this process. And so we're using catalysts to get as close as we can to the thermodynamic limit for, this, for energy use in this process. So I'll just walk you through how the catalyst works. We have water and carbon dioxide molecules. When those water and carbon dioxide molecules interact with the metal catalyst surface in the presence of electricity, then the molecules break apart into carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms. Those atoms then recombine to make the molecules that, are com that compose chemicals and fuels. So far, we've shown that we can make 16 different compounds with this process. And these are materials that span everything from common household supplies all the way to, pol to polymer precursors that make up plastics and fuels. <clears throat> to determine which of those many compounds that we make, we also use catalysts. So we the, the product is determined by the identity of the metal that we make the catalyst from, by the size of those nanoparticle metal catalysts, and by their shape. So this is a picture of metal nanocubes that we made at the Molecular Foundry at Berkeley Lab. And what our data indicates is that the edges of these cubes are very good at coupling carbon atoms together. And so these catalysts end up being very good for making ethanol and ethylene. And by using other metals, other sizes, and other shapes, we can make the other products that I showed earlier. Now that we have a catalyst, we also need to put, the, put those catalysts into a reactor. And the reactor makes the optimal conditions for carbon dioxide recycling, such as the temperature and the pressure. For the reactor, we're using an existing design. So this is a picture of an industrial reactor that's currently used to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. By removing the water splitting catalysts from this reactor and replacing them with carbon dioxide recycling ca catalysts, we can quickly make a very efficient carbon dioxide recycling process. So this reactor design has many advantages. It's been used for the last 50 years, and so we have the ability to manufacture it very efficiently, and the cost has come down quite a lot. It's also compatible with renewable and intermittent electricity sources. We can attach this directly to a wind, pan or wind turbine or solar panel in order to recycle carbon dioxide. It's also very powerful and compact. So the heart of this reactor is an electrochemical stack four of which are circled here. In each one of those stacks, 
we have the carbon dioxide conversion power of 37,000 trees. That's like 64 football fields of dense forest in a suitcase size reactor. <laughs> I know, right? So this is our current prototype that we've made in the Cyclotron Road program at Berkeley Lab. Uh, but we don't want to just be recycling carbon dioxide in the lab. We want to deploy this technology out into the real world. And so over the next few months, we're going to be scaling up to a reactor of an intermediate size between our current prototype and the industrial scale reactor that I showed earlier. And, and then that will be a launching point for the, in the next couple of years getting to that industrial scale. In, in uh, anticipation of deploying this technology, we've started to talk to potential early adopters of carbon dioxide recycling. And we found that they fall into three often overlapping buckets. There are currently producers of carbon dioxide that are just emitting that CO2 into the atmosphere. And they would like to be able to utilize that resource instead of throwing it away. These are places like fermentation facilities that are currently making ethanol, cement production, <coughs> and existing oil and gas refineries. We've also talked to potential users who have excess renewable electricity. There are times when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, but electricity demand is not that high. And so this would be a place where we can use that renewable electricity that we're generating during those times. We also have talked to users who need the chemicals and fuels that we're producing. So there are some disadvantages to the current way we make chemicals, which is with very large infrastructure and very high capital costs. So our, our technology has advantages that we can do it on all scales and at potentially lower capital cost. It's also an alternative and greener way of making these materials. So essentially, we can recycle carbon dioxide back into the same chemicals and fuels that we're currently using with just the most simple inputs, carbon dioxide, water, and electricity. We've shown that we can make many household products. Acetone is the main component found in nail polish remover. Ethylene glycol is used to make antifreeze. And acetic acid is found in many cleaning solutions. We can also make plastics. We can make ethylene, which is a precursor to polyethylene, one of the most commonly used plastics. By making plastic out of carbon dioxide, we're essentially sequestering that CO2. Because these plastics essentially are permanent. They don't degrade very well. We can also make a number of fuels. Methane is the main component found in natural gas. Um, ethanol is blended with gasoline for use in cars and other uh, engines. And we can make diesel fuel and methanol from syngas. So I'll just leave you finally with this quote from Buckminster Fuller. Pollution is nothing but the resources we're not harvesting. We allow them to disperse because we've been ignorant of their value. Thank you. Wait. So did you forget something? I, I found this backstage. So, so this is this is a this is our current reactor prototype that we'll be scaling up over the next couple months. <laughs>